the standard of treatment in patients with CAT, cancer associated thrombosis, is low molecular weight heparin. And low molecular weight heparin need to be given once a day uh, as a subcutaneous injection. And the guidelines actually tell us that it should be given for six months. Uh, and if the cancer is active, actually longer, um, which in, in the reality may, may, may mean eight, nine, ten, you know, quite, quite a long time. Um, and although it has been shown to be uh, very effective compared to warfarin, uh, the, the main disadvantage is these, these injections. So what we did in the Hoxi VT cancer study, we compared the standard of low molecular weight heparin once a day, subcutaneous injection, with edoxaban. Edoxaban is a direct 10A inhibitor, and that's given as a single uh, drug, single pill uh, per day. You mentioned some of the patients that were involved in that. Can you tell us about the numbers of the cohorts? Yeah, so we randomized a total of uh, 1,050, so 500, a little more than 500 in, 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 ba but, but in both groups. Uh, quite, quite comparable. Uh, if if you like to have some of the, um, the data, it actually, you know, 98 percent of these patients had active cancer. 50 uh, percent uh, uh, had metastasis uh, at the time of entry into the trial, and 72 patients actively received anti-cancer anti therapy. So you really, and that's the unique thing that we need to realize here, is you're in the setting of an active cancer complicated by a thrombosis. Um, both the patient and the oncologist want to get rid of this problem because they want to treat the patient for the primary disease, which is cancer. Um, and so, therefore, in our trial, what we did is we actually took the combined outcome of a recurrence, which is an unwanted outcome, and a major bleed as a combined or composite outcome. And this is unique because it usually is either going for efficacy or for safety. In this case, after consulting with, with many uh, patients and, and oncologists worldwide, we we'll came to the conclusion that both these complications are, are unwanted. Uh, and that was the reason to actually make that into our primary outcome. And when it came to the results, could you tell us about those? Our hope was to show non-inferiority. Um, and the answer is we did very convincingly show non-inferiority. And this is important because an other unique element of the trial that is everybody was treated for six months, but we followed these patients for one year. If the physician made a decision to continue treatment beyond six months, that was up to, to, to their decision. Um, and in actual fact, many, many patients went on to eight, nine, or, or even full 12 months. So our primary outcome was the recurrence of venous thrombosis or bleeding over that entire one year period. That was the primary outcome. And that was clearly non-inferior. Second uh, is we looked at six months. It was one of the sensitivity analysis to actually uh, compare all the way up to six months. And then finally, traditionally, there is an on-protocol analysis. And also those two sensitivity analyses came to the same conclusion, which is clearly non-inferiority. And were there any other advantages associated with the old dose apart from not having to deal with injections? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, we monitored why patients uh, stopped treatment and, and there was quite a substantial number of patients that were randomized to the low molecular weight hairpin that stopped after a while. Well, uh, with an oral pill, yes, you do have some patients with nausea, but that's a rare, uh, uh, let's say, occasion. And so therefore, and this is important in the interpretation of this study. It's a comparison of two regimen. So the standard regimen is these injections. Works very good. Uh, and the pill, of course, has its advantage. And the whole thing is, what in the end for these patients um, is going to be much more acceptable? And it's obvious that um, with a pill, uh, that's a no-brainer. We'll change practice overnight because until this study, uh, we were stuck with subcutaneous injection because that was the best treatment. That's in all the guidelines. Um, and we now have an, an alternative. There's one interesting observation in that study is that the, there were less recurrences. If you look at the components of the primary outcome, there were less uh, recurrences with the doxaban 
and it was slightly more bleeding. In the end, it was that 13, 12, 13 percent that was non-inferior. However, um, when we looked, and this was another unique element in the design of the study, we looked at the severity of bleeding um, when they presented, and that were 12 patients and 12 patients in each group. So although you had this slight disbalance, in terms of um, the um, bleeds that are clinically very significant and, and are an emergency, that was identical. So I think the bottom line is, dear colleagues, if you have a patient with cancer-associated thrombosis, a oral course of edoxavan, 60 milligram once a day, you can lower the dose to 30 in some patients, depending on the renal uh, uh, status. But basically, we have now a very attractive alternative.